Welcome back. Now the video I'm going to do, I'm going to explain spherical aberration and do a problem with it. So the spherical aberration is a is an uh, issue that happens when a, a lens or a mirror is cut uh, spherically rather than parabolically, right? So let's assume here that you have a plano convex uh, lens. This is called plano convex, right? And then remember the equation for a lens is given by one over f is equal to n minus one. 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2, right? And so let's assume here that it has a radius of curvature of 20 centimeters. So this will be r2, will be the radius of curvature of this side of the lens, and it's going to be negative 20 centimeters. And the reason it's negative is because it's facing this size, uh, this side, right? So it has a negative radius of curvature, and it faces the virtual world, okay? so. That means all points to the lens, right, is gonna be is gonna be 20 centimeters long. Okay, this side of the lens, the left side, is gonna have an infinite radius because it's a plano convex lens. So R1 is gonna be infinity, right? So what uh, is its focal length gonna be? So you have here, let's say the index of refraction is 1.52. So you have here 1 over f equals 1.52 minus 1. Right, R1 is infinity, so that's going to disappear, and you're going to have minus 1 over, then the R2 is going to be negative 20, right? So it's going to be 1 over F is equal to 0.52 over 20, right? So the focal length is going to be 20 over 0.52, okay? Okay, so what does focal length mean? Well, when we described uh, focal length in the theory, we said that focal length, by definition, is a point in space, right? So it's a point in space. Uh, so in this case, since the focal length is positive, right? So the focal length will be, if this one was 20 centimeters, right? So it's a point in space right here, from 38.5 uh, centimeters from the middle of the lens, right, 38.5 centimeters from the middle of the lens, such that all parallel rays of light are gonna bend and go through the focal point, right? All parallel beams of light, no matter how, uh, where their location is, right, when they bend, they're gonna bend and go through the focal point. Now, it turns out that it, it's actually not gonna be like that, right? Because this lens is actually spherical. So the best way to prevent this from happening is to have a, a parabolic lens, right? So the shape has to be cut in a parabola such that the, the all rays of light will actually go through the focal point. So in this problem, we're actually gonna prove that all rays of light are not gonna go through the focal point, which is 38.5%, so that is our Theoretical focal point, right? 38.5 centimeters. So how are we gonna show that? Well, let's choose two different uh, rays of light. Five centimeters. So what's gonna happen, since this left side is uh, just vertical, it's gonna go straight through the lens. It's not gonna bend, right? So index of refraction here is 1.52. When it uh, goes through the this side of the lens, it's gonna bend. So let's calculate actually how much it's gonna bend by using Snell's law of refraction, right? So what is the normal line uh, to the surface, to the right side, right, surface? Where do we measure the normal line? Well, we measure it from the center, right? The center of the curvature, we go like this. Okay, so how do we calculate theta incident? This incident angle, right, with respect to that normal line. So this theta incident and this theta incident are the same, right? So then uh, how do we calculate that? Well, we can make a triangle here with this from the center to here, make a triangle and then come down, then go like this. We can say the distance from here to here is 20 centimeters, right, because that's the radius of curvature of the lens. Right, and then we can say this side is the five centimeters, right? Five centimeters, so we say sine of theta incident, right? Sine of theta incident is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, five over 20, so that's gonna be one fourth. So theta incident is gonna be what? Eight degrees, 
right? So then what's going to happen when that beam of light goes from the glass to the air, it's going to bend outward from the normal, right? So then it's going to bend outward this way, and we want to know where it crosses the axial line, right? And we're going to show that the, uh, the distance is going to be different than 38.5, depending on where that beam starts, how far up from the axial line, right? So then you have here this one, like this, like this. Okay, so this distance from here to here is 20, right? Then we found out that this angle here is equal to 14.478 uh, degrees. So now let's calculate what this angle is, theta refracted. So we say the index of refraction ni sine of theta i is equal to nr sine of theta r. So index of refraction of the incident medium, in this case it's glass, then it's refracting into air. So index of refraction of the incident medium, 1.52, sine of theta i, well we already know sine of theta i is 1 fourth. So I can just put here 1 fourth, okay? 1 fourth, and then now we have here uh, an index of refraction of air, one, and then sine of theta r, okay, so we can say P37, so that's gonna be this angle, which is basically this angle, 22.337. So then I can subtract one, that from 180, right? Six, six degrees, right? And then I can calculate this angle really easily by just adding these and subtracting from 180, right? degrees. So then I can use the law of sines because what I want to know is I know this distance is 20 centimeters. I want to calculate this distance. The distance from the center to where this beam of light goes through the axial line. So I want to know the distance from here all the way to there. So then I can say x over x over sine of 157.666 is equal to 20 divided by sine of 7.856 degrees, okay? So the distance from here all the way to there is 55.60, right? Then if I subtract the distance from here, there is, here is gonna be 20 centimeters, right? That's the radius of curvature from here all the way to the far edge of the lens. So subtract 20 from this, and you get here 35.60 centimeters. Okay, so that's gonna be the distance from the far edge of the lens to here. So you can see that it's not exactly equal to the focal length, right? The focal length is supposed to be measured from the center of the lens. So if this lens is, let's say, two centimeters wide, the, the width of the lens can be found out if the, if the problem gave us the vertical distance of the lens. That one we don't have right now. But it's gonna be probably around the thickness may be one to two centimeters. So let's say it's two centimeters. So if I add one centimeter from the center to here, one plus the 35, I get here 36.60. And even that's not equal to the focal uh, length, right? 38.5. So this shows you that straight beams of light don't necessarily go through the focal length when the lens is spherical. It has to be parabolic in order to actually go through the focal length of the lens, right? So it's actually gonna go through a different point depending on where the, the straight beam of uh, light starts. So now let's assume there's a beam of light that starts 10 centimeters up and it goes straight. Where is that one gonna go, okay? I'm gonna have a, a light from here to here. I'm gonna say sine of theta incident is gonna be 10 over 20. 10 over 20, so then that's gonna be equal to a half, right? And then theta incident is gonna be what? 0.5 inverse sine, that's 30 degrees, right? Theta incident, 30 degrees. So then the triangle looks like this now, okay? Then it's gonna bend downward, right? We wanna see where does it cross the, the axial line, right? If it crosses exactly uh, 55.6, then that's perfect. That means there is no such thing as a spherical aberration, right? But it's not going to, okay? So then this distance is gonna be uh, 20. This angle here is going to be 30 degrees, right? So then when it uh, refracts, data refracted, what is that equal to? So we have here 1.521 half, right? And then let's find out the data refracted. 
49.464 degrees, right? So that's this angle. Then you subtract that from 180. You get 130.536, 130.536. Six degrees, right? And then you add these and uh, uh, subtract from 180. So then we're going to do the same thing. Let's call this X2. The other one we'll call X1. X1 came out to be 55.6, or if you measure from the lens, it came out to be 35.6. Okay? So then uh, X2 is going to come out what? Well, we can do here similar equation x2 over sine of what so we're going to do sine of um 130.536 that's going to equal what 20 over sine of 19.464 okay okay 45.62 centimeters Okay, so you see how it bends more, and so it ends up going through the axial line much uh, earlier. So this is exactly what we mean by spherical aberration. So if you have a, a source of light, let's say you're looking at the sun, and the beams of the light are coming from the sun, right, pretty much straight on, so then uh, some of the beams of light are going to come like this, okay, these ones are going to come like this, Okay, and then the ones that are farther out are going to come in. You see how they're not focusing at the same point? So the further out, they come in and curve more, and they focus earlier. The ones that are closer, they focus later. And so you don't have a single focal point. You see, so what is the difference between their, uh, uh, where they cross the, what is the difference between where they cross the, uh, axial line. Well, you can just subtract 55 minus 45, so that'll be, we can call that delta x. That's a centimeter difference. Even this one is not equal to the focal length, right? I subtract here first the, the 20 centimeters for the radius of curvature, that's going to be 25.62, and if I subtract one more centimeter, that's going to be 24.62. You see, so this focal length, 38.5, only works better for the, ax for the rays of light that are closer to the axial line, you see? 38.85, 38.5 was closer to 36.6. .6. It wasn't identical, but at least it was closer. So any ray of light like five centimeters, four centimeters, three, two, one, the rays of light that are closer to the axial line give you a better, a better result to the focal length equation, right? The ones that are farther up and further down, they bend more and they end up being a lot less than the focal length. That's why we say the thin lens equation that we have, the focal length equation, if the lens is spherical, works better for lines that are closer, closer to the axial lines. The further out you get, the less it works well, okay? So that's a general principle. But if it's parabolic, if the curvature is parabolic, then it will work for any parallel rays of light, okay? So now you can kind of see the concept of spherical aberration and why we want to cut our mirrors and lenses to perfect parabolic shape versus spherical, okay? Thank you very much.